A water polo goalie who turns failure into Olympic success. A woman who takes the frozen super pipe to the extreme while grabbing some big air. And an athlete swims and succeeds in her golden dream. I'm Alexandra Paul. Water polo combines all the intensity of soccer, wrestling, and basketball and pours it into an Olympic-sized pool. Megan Kwan discusses life as a role model. When Winning Women Returns. Seventeen-year-old Megan Kwan had a vision, pure and simple. She wanted Olympic gold. That hunger has carried her to the top of women's swimming and made her a role model for young women everywhere. When I was 12 years old, I watched the 1996 Olympics on TV, and I remember seeing Amanda Beard there, and she won two silver medals and a gold medal. And she was only 14 years old, and I was, I was watching it in amazement, and I just thought, you know, in the 2000 Olympics, I want to make that team and be just like Amanda Beard. And then when I was 14, two years later, I ended up winning my first national title. But winning didn't come easy for Megan. She spent many hours and many mornings pushing her body to its limits. I was not good at all when I first started, and that just motivated me to work harder. There was tons of people on the team who were a lot faster than I was, and I just like the challenge. I live for the challenge. I wake up every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to practice, and it's for the challenge. In the beginning, this future Olympian even had to challenge herself just to get in the water. Actually, I started out swimming the backstroke just because I didn't like putting my head underwater. <laughs> um, but as I started getting better and better, I really just grew on the breaststroke, and I really enjoyed that. But in order to compete against the best in the world, it takes more than just a good stroke. If we're going to become an Olympic swimmer, she has certainly to have a lot of vision of what her possibilities are. I believe you have to start at a reasonably young age, 11 or 12 years old, perhaps earlier, and you have to develop excellent technique. In addition to training, vision, and technique, sometimes it's the little things that help the most. You have to have a little bit of the frog kick and the toes out in the way you walk and the way your hip joints are set to have a great breaststroke kick. So it's, it's a unique stroke of the four stroke competitive strokes. There are also physical advantages and disadvantages that can affect a swimmer. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm one of the shortest athletes there are out here. Um, especially at the Olympics, there was girls that I was racing against that were 6'2 and 6'3, and I'm 5'7. And so they have a lot more strength and power than I do. But the way for any athlete to perform their best has always been lots of hard work. I train as a distance freestyler and I am her. Um, I go probably about 15,000 meters a day and then weightlifting on top of that. That consists of about four hours of swimming and an hour of weightlifting. So I really put in a lot more yardage as a distance swimmer than I do as a sprinter. Um, but usually when I come to meets, I'm more of a sprinter. And I'm still training about five hours a day on top of a full load at school. We try to put all of the motivation they have together with their physical capabilities and try to blend those into success for them. To train them so that they can reach their optimum potential physically. An awful lot of what they get uh, motivationally or emotionally comes from within themselves. You have to show up to practice, you have to do the work at the pool. But I think when it comes down to racing and you're at a, a huge meet like the Olympics, um, it's going to come down to who wants it more. Megan also has a mental exercise she uses to get focused for each race. Every night before I go to bed, I just... I relax and I think about my best race, which is the Hunter Breaststroke. So I think in the future of a race that I'd like to have, and my race in the future that I'd like to have is the world record in the Hunter Breaststroke. So I just go through and I think about it, and I take a stopwatch, and I go through the entire race timing myself. My goal in the Hunter Breaststroke is to go 105.49 or better, which is the world record by more than a second. 
And when I time myself with a stopwatch, I'm usually within a couple tenths of that time. I think it helps because then when I get up on the blocks and you know there's a lot of pressure, just like at the Olympics when there's 18,000 people watching you, um, I feel like I've already done it before and this is just another race. That's so important. They have a sense of what they're going to accomplish. They can dream it. They can lie in bed at night and see themselves succeeding and, and they take that energy and, and they, they build it up over time and when they get into the race they're, they know exactly what they want and they're able to go right for their you know, their goal time. I think swimming is 99% a mental sport. Um, I think if you believe that you can do it, then you will. If you strongly believe that you can accomplish something, then you will. Megan's vision was realized. She made it to the Olympics, the most respected race in the world. The only thing I was repeating to myself was, Megan, just go out there and do what you do best and just race. I think I repeated that to myself about 30 times when I was up on the blocks because I knew that I had done the work in practice, so I was confident, and I just needed to tell myself what I needed to do, and that was just to simply race. Megan's ability to focus paid off. I touched the wall, and I looked up at the clock, and I was so excited I couldn't even see my time. I saw my name, and I, well, I saw my time, but I couldn't see what place I got, so I was like, oh, what place, what place? But I was just so excited I couldn't even concentrate enough to see it, and I saw the big number one pop up next to my name, and I just, I just went crazy. Megan wasn't the only one celebrating her Olympic gold. Washington State declared Megan Kwan Day upon her return. The best part of the Olympics was standing up on the podium and hearing the national anthem playing. I remember standing up there just wishing that the national anthem was so much longer because at that moment I knew I did not want to get step off of that podium. My ultimate goal is to break the world record in the 100 breaststroke. And so I'm looking at going through the 2008 Olympics until I achieve that goal, you know, I'm still going to keep swimming. Even when I do break that world record, I'm still going to keep going. And as long as I'm having fun at it. Something else that's been a lot of fun for the 17-year-old Olympian is to pass along some of her hard-earned wisdom. I really love talking to younger kids, and I talk to about 400 elementary school kids a week. I just love it. I love talking to them. I love teaching them about goal setting and following their dreams, and it's just really, really fun. I think they learn a lot from it, and if I can do anything to help a kid out there, I'm willing to do that. I have a lot of fun doing it. Megan continues to have fun and win medals. Her short-term and long-term goals are set. And her future looks like gold.